brainstorming is a classic active learning strategy, which encourages students to share words or phrases related to a topic. A brainstorm can be used as a bridge-in, a pre-assessment, or as an active learning component in a presentation of new learning. Let's see how Lauren uses a Mentimeter word cloud in a brainstorm that invites new nursing students to identify the values they believe are most vital in their field. Hello, everybody. I am so glad to see you here today. Um, this is our first class of what's going to prove to be a really interesting and fun and um, meaningful semester, I think. Um, you've chosen a, a really important profession. Nursing means a lot <laughs> to the world and is really important, especially given everything that healthcare has been through in the past couple of years. So, um, of course, in all of our learning together throughout the semester, we're going to focus a lot on the ins and outs of the healthcare system. You're going to learn practical skills and all sorts of things about intraprofessional communication, inter interpersonal communication, um, and all sorts of other things. But another core part of nursing is you who you are, what are your values, what are your beliefs, what are you bringing to the profession, what are you going to bring to your team? in whatever sort of healthcare setting you end up working in. So I like to start off the semester by doing a bit of an icebreaker activity um, about values. And this will help us get to know each other a little bit better. And then we'll also launch us into our discussion about um, that we're, you know, is the main content of our class meeting today, which is the values of healthcare in Canada. So I've added a, a link here in the chat to a Mentimeter. So if folks can just click on that, that would be wonderful. And I'm going to uh, share my screen so we can all see uh, what our responses are here. There we go. So hopefully folks can log in now. Let me know if you have any difficulty. Um, if you're using a phone, a mobile device, you can also just go to the website here, www.menti.com, and use the code there. Great. Looks like folks are already in here. So this is the question, yes. What are the most important values you hold as a nurse? Great, so I see a few in there already. Um, this is a big question too, so you are not in a rush. I usually like to take about three or four minutes to really fully explore this. If you just wanna think quietly to yourself first for a while, write it down you know, in your own list and then um, add to the conversation here, uh, you're welcome to. What are some other words? Yeah, great. Some new ones are emerging emerging here. Got diversity, trustworthiness. Uh, cool. Oh, creative. Oh, these are some really neat, really neat values that you folks hold. Another neat thing about this Mentimeter word cloud is that you can see some of these words are bigger than others, right? So we've got trust here seems to be the biggest, which means that that's uh, a number of you have written that same response. And so trust is, is a big one amongst our group, which is really helpful to know. Why don't we check in with someone who um, wrote the word trust, if you don't mind sharing, and let us know what, what that means to you. What does trust as a value mean to you in nursing? Uh, so I wrote trust uh, because I think it's just at the core of nursing. So you're often the go-between between patients and doctor, and uh, patients are often uh, feeling very vulnerable. So if they feel that they can trust you to be honest with them and to be a person they can talk to about their like fears and concerns, uh, they will more likely to uh, trust the whole process and the medical system more. Oh, that is so nicely put, Tina. Thank you. Um, you said so many important things in there, right? This, this, you know, you sometimes as the nurse being the voice to the larger team for the patient. So that trust, the trust that you're going to reflect their needs and their fears and everything um, in a way that's accurate is really key that you want them, you know, we're, we're privileged to be in this profession that we, we get to be with people and work with people during a really difficult and vulnerable time in their lives. Um, 
not everyone gets to do that at work. And so that's that can be exhausting for us, um, but also really rewarding and very meaningful. And so I love that you incorporated that into your your um, sort of explanation of trust, too, is that they, you know, you're almost in, in some ways representing the institution. You're the person that they'll see most often if we're thinking a hospital setting, for example. Um, and so they want to be comfortable to, in, to confide in you and to trust um, that you'll support them in ways they need. Thank you. I also see uh, another one of my favorite words here, empathy. Anyone who, who wrote empathy care to share what that means to them? Yeah, it was me who wrote the word empathy, and I can, uh, I think I, I relate to it, uh, to the nursing profession, especially, because I feel like uh, nurses are the one who has the capacity to understand or feel what their patients are feeling and what they're going through, you know, mm -hmm. they literally know how, uh, when and what their patients are feeling and how their needs are to be, um, you know, catered to them what type of needs, what type of services are to be given. So I think empathetic word is the best that describes nurses. Thank you, Peter. Really, really um, thoughtful response there. You know, one of the interesting things with empathy that's come up as I've been teaching this course for many years is um, I think a lot of folks go into nursing because they are particularly empathetic people. You know, you do, you kind of, you know, feel the pain of others, you you might take some of that on and, and relate to it. Um, and one thing that's come up is the difference between feeling empathy and showing empathy. And that's a learning that, you know, I've really taken away from this course. And I think I've discussed in detail with a lot of students too, that those who they feel empathy very easily. And then communicating that empathy to patients or colleagues or, or family members of patients, et cetera, is almost a whole other skill. So I'm really glad you highlighted this word um, because it's one that's going to reoccur week after week um, when we discuss the difference between, yeah, feeling empathy, which I think comes easy to many of us in this profession. And then how do we show empathy? What kind of words might we use in difficult situations to, to communicate what we're feeling inside? Uh, that's wonderful. And another great thing about this word cloud is that I can actually save this, which I'm going to do right now. I'll give us a few more minutes to reflect. But um, at the end of our reflection, I'm going to save this word cloud. And then at the end of the semester, at our very last class meeting, we'll do this same Mentimeter activity. We'll do this word cloud again. And then I'm going to show you the differences. Uh, we'll compare the two from the first day and the last day of the course, and we'll see if any of these values have changed, or maybe some of them have gotten bigger because more people have recognized their importance. Maybe some of them smaller or don't exist anymore. Uh, new ones appear, etc. So, uh, yeah, that's a really fun feature of this too. And, and thank you folks for um, reflecting on this and, and sharing with the wider group.